Okay, we're going to start with a real simple question for our panel, and we're going to kind of just go down the line. And uh, the neat thing about uh, Brian here is he's got a pretty cool tool about uh, uh, to utilize for retention. So we're going to kind of see how he's working with his companies, and that's going to be kind of a unique component of our discussion today. But uh, we're going to just start with kind of something simple that I think the, the elephant in the room, you know, you know, what are your recruiters and restaurant operators seen right now with respect to the current talent pool of candidates. So let's just kind of you share with what you're hearing from your customers about the current talent pool and then maybe a little bit about how your solution or tools are helping your current customers. Yeah, absolutely. And Brian, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So a lot of the restaurants, bars, quick whether it's quick serve, full serve, the challenge that they're having is during the pandemic, a lot of the employees left to go work for Amazon or work for other gig employers. And they found that the flexibility really benefited their lifestyle. And it's been really difficult to get them back in the work. And one of the biggest benefits is having access to earnings on a daily basis, right? Being able to be paid instantly and daily. And so a lot of operators, they don't want to run to the bank to pick up cash to pay out their employees every single night. It's a nightmare. And so what we've gone ahead and done is we built a solution that allows operators, whether they're coffee shops, quick serve, full serve, the ability to instantly disperse earnings and tips at the end of each shift. Gives them the ability to compete. I know with a lot of restaurants, they stress time off, flexibility, and so forth. And by adding or layering this benefit, it's really empowered the restaurant operators to acquire a larger pool of candidates. Good, good information. Andrea, tell us a little bit kind of what you're, you're seeing in the marketplace and what your recruiters and operators are saying about the talent pool. Yeah, so I think we all know we're in a dogfight right now for talent. Um, like you said, Amazon, a lot of big tech places um, have increased their wages. So we're trying to compete as well. Um, and there may be some restaurants that don't have the ability to increase wages. Um, so really trying to highlight the benefits. So whether it's the work-life balance, the flexibility of schedule. Um, so Whataburger is very unique that we're 24 seven. So we can work a lot with our college students um, and ensuring that they have that good quality of life balance. Um, so really just trying to highlight and educate the benefits that it's not necessarily just the wages, but the scheduling, the scholarship program, the e, uh, employee assistance program. Um, so really just trying to highlight, again, benefits for those, um, those markets because we're, we're trying to get talent as much as everyone else is. Thank you. How about you, Sabrina? What, what, you have six units, right? And how many units do you have in Whataburger? Oh, close to about 900, corporate yeah. and franchise. So you're going to get a good, good perspective of both types of <laughs> recruiting out there and what needs to be done. But Sabrina, tell us about you know, your brand a little and then kind of uh, your, you, know, you talk a lot about culture and that's yes. how you're utilizing FIT. So share some of your thoughts. Yes, we are a farm to table um, locally sourced restaurant in Houston. We have six locations. And of course, we've seen a lot of people um, leaving the industry. And we're, we're trying to focus on that, on promoting the right culture and bringing the right people in, being more strategic in our um, hiring so that we can hire for retention. For people, creating the right cultures attracts the right people. So that's, that's what we've been focusing on in this you know, chaos of trying to find people. Well, I want to kind of spin it a little here. So culture, benefits, kind of you know, instant pay. How would you guys utilize that in your recruitment marketing messages? Because again, you got to get that out to the candidates in some way, form, or fashion. We're all married to Indeed, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. You know, they're like, you know, nemesis, if you will. That's They're just taking your money left and right. But, you know, what can you do in your recruitment marketing to kind of promote those different things to educate some of these folks here that a good way to get that message out that you guys are a brand of choice to work for and then share with us kind of what you're seeing your customers do as a kind of a hook to get them in the door. Who wants to go with that one? I, I think that culture like wraps up all of that because obviously we promote the benefits, we promote the pay, um, but we've been focusing on um, like a bonus, a referral bonus, so that our own employees bring people in. We're actually trying to implement one for the guests as well, for to have the customer refer people. Um, and like I said, when you have the right culture, like people are gonna notice and they're gonna bring more people in and it attracts the right kind of candidate. We try to look for attitude above experience and skills. The right attitude in a candidate is priceless, you almost know about it. 
Um, and yeah, that, that's what hiring for retention mm -hmm. is for us. Yeah. Good. You mentioned the referral program, so Whataburger's doing something similar as well. We're trying to think outside the box um, compared to LinkedIn and Indeed, and we actually want our current employees um, to refer other family members, other coworkers, whether from school or different um, different areas, and we're actually giving them tools and resources um, so that they can recruit via TikTok, via um, Twitter, Facebook, um, Snapchat, all of the other um, social media platforms. That that's where we want our candidates. Um, we want those those 17 year olds um, that are on TikTok that aren't going to be on on LinkedIn. Um, but they're able to, to post things um, via their stories, um, and Whataburger's kind of put together a toolkit so that way they have all the information and employees can post um, on their social media and also get money um, to get those referrals in as well. So that's something kind of unique that we're trying to do, just something different to, to tailor to a different market. Good. And Brian, can yeah. you? Yeah, I'll say, you know, some of the hardest recruiting is in quick serve, right? Uh, we look at the turnover numbers. And there are obviously tremendous benefits being offered, but at the end of the day, one of the, the unfortunately, one of the, the items that most candidates look at is pay. Like, how much can I make, especially since I've been out of work or working less shifts over the past year? And there are some fantastic point of sale technology companies here today that have actually enabled point of sale to actually have the customer tip. Now, what that's doing, it's taking that minimum wage, that 10 bucks an hour, 12 bucks an hour, and it's allowing the customer to inflate that, right? So now the owner is, in fact, not paying more per hour, but because it's, being, it's enabling the customer to pay, it's actually increasing the ceiling of earnings. So we've seen some tremendous success with a lot of our, uh, whether it be pizza delivery, quick server coffee shops, using, whether it's Heartland, Focus, or other points of sale, enabling that a feature and as a net result have acquired more talent without spending more on payroll wages. That's good. And so back to your your tools. So are your customers kind of in their recruitment marketing kind of saying, hey, you could earn up to, is that kind of what they're telling that story? Absolutely. They're not saying you could earn up to, but they're also saying you could earn it daily. Okay. You don't need to wait two weeks. And that's a big challenge when we start looking at QSR related businesses is that I have to wait two weeks or one week for my earnings. What happens if I have a copay? What happens if I, my, my tire blows out? I need that money right away. Yeah. And what I don't want to do is use a predatory payday advance company. So it's not just providing them the ability to increase wages, but give it to them on a daily. That's going to create peace of mind. And with peace of mind, equates to retention at that, in that particular role is what we found. Good, good. Mm -hmm. Sounds like it's sounds like it's working for some of your customers. Mm -hmm. Good. All right, ladies, let's keep kind of going down that recruiting piece. I want, I want some of these folks in the audience to kind of say, oh, that's an idea I haven't thought of, or that's something that, that I should try. And I know you talked about referral bonuses. You know, I mean, what else is out there that uh, there are some techniques that you're, you've seen that have been effective that you know, might be kind of something an aha moment for some of the audience. Yeah, you mentioned earlier about the competitive pay, um, but really trying to highlight um, with our college students, so having that um, those partnerships with the universities, the local um, colleges, um, letting them know that um, at Whataburger, our operating partners can make up to six figures, you know, coming in straight out of college. And so for a lot of, you know, fresh out of college, wow, that's insane. Like, I would never have thought a uh, fast food restaurant manager that I can make six figures. So really trying to break that stereotype um, and including that into a lot of our recruiting techniques. Um, so not, again, advertising your pay, but benefits, um, but building the partnerships with the, the community resources. So the Chamber of Commerce, the local schools, the universities, um, even getting into the high schools, you know, just to kind of plant those seeds early um, and just building partnerships so that way you have it for future use. So I want to stay here for a second. So are you, um, is the HR team doing that or is it something you're having your operator do in their communities? Where are they kind of making these connections or yeah. how are you championing them to do that? It's a collaboration. So our uh, talent acquisition and human resources team are building the partnerships with our, our military veterans, the colleges, the universities. Um, but we're giving those tools to our operating partners out there in the restaurant saying, all right, we want you to be the face of Whataburger because um, I'm not there in the restaurants every day, but you are. And you can go down and you know who's it, uh, locally in your neighborhood and have the, those face-to-face -face interactions. Um, that's not something we've done in the past. And so I think that's something new that we want really our operating partners to elevate their leadership um, and kind of be the mayor of their hometowns. 
So if any of these people came up to you after this discussion and you said, hey, what are some of those tools? You might be able to help them, right? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you guys got to hit her up. How about you, Sabrina? What's kind of some of the things you're doing, again, the grassroots or just something um, that you think this audience can really kind of leverage from your, your tools? One of our benefits is a continuing education reimbursement, which is really neat because most of our candidates and most of our employees are students indeed. So it's a one, once a year reimbursement that you get for a class that you took that you got a B plus or more on. And um, we're focusing on promoting that within our um, employees right now. Um, another thing that we did that I was talking to Andy about was uh, for general managers for our six locations, we created a little guide for hiring. Um, it has common interview questions that we want the general manager to ask. And we created a system that red, yellow, green for answers, which helps them, you know, because we were having a little bit of issues of inconsistency of hiring among all six locations. So that's really helping standardize what we're looking for in a candidate and just having kind of the same um, hiring for retention mentality at every location. Good. Let's thank you. So just to let you guys all know a little secret, all three of these people, this is the first time they've ever been on a panel. <laughs> So aren't you thinking they're doing a good job so far? <laughs> so you can tell they're, they're not nervous or anything. They're doing great. They're very proud representations of their companies. I'm, I'm glad to be on this panel with you guys. So let's look here. Uh, you know, you're a technology company. You're a, you know, a thousand unit company. You're mm -hmm. six. Well, what are some things, in, um, this, you can make segue into this a bit, but what about you two guys? Or what are y'all doing around recruiting automation? What, where have y'all thought about going that, down that road? Where does this audience need to start thinking about, you know, self-scheduling, chatbots, uh, you know, any of those kind of tools that will, you know, enhance the candidate experience mm -hmm. or give a better employment brand, you know, where is like Waterburger going down that road and then what is, you know, somebody like your units, yeah. uh, Sabrina, what are y'all two doing? Do you mind sharing if y'all got anything yeah. on the horizon? Really, honestly, it's just simplifying the process. Um, I think originally with Whataburger, um, we used to have paper applications, and it had over 30 questions that an applicant had to go through, um, and it was just very time consuming. And we did a study and you know, got some feedback from those applicants about how was the onboarding experience, how was the interview experience. Um, so we've revamped, and you mentioned the interview guides, we've revamped the interview guides um, to make it kind of more um, easier to use, not only for that interviewer, for, for the candidate um, sitting on the opposite end, but even the, the application process, just really simplifying it, tailoring it to including your culture, but also their needs as well. Um, so I think that's really just something I'm trying to promote is just simplifying the, the, the process. Good. Mm -hmm. Sabrina, can you touch um, on some? We've of automated our training system. Training is really, really important for retention as well. Um, and we, we're using a platform called Weisdale that is, is really helping us. It's a point system and we have kind of a farmer's market. So for every course that you take and for every um, new training that, that you by yourself just take, then you get your points, and then we have that market where you can use points and trade them for things. It also uh, works as a you know social platform, kind of a Facebook kind among employees. So it's really helping promote culture and just the right training for all employees. Good, Brian. Are you kind of seeing some of your clients kind of start going down a, a recruiting automation type road yet? Or you know, it's hard for me to speak to recruiting automation, but I can speak. So we work with uh, walk-ons, for example, is, is one of our clients, and they do an absolutely phenomenal job from the initial time you turn in the application to your training. It really makes the employees feel like they're part of a team. They're enthusiastic. They're pumped up. So what, and, and it's evidence. And so we know, we see the employee turnover, right? When they're exiting or entering our system. And that is one particular brand that has some of the lowest turnover. And I have to attribute it specifically to the entire candidate experience from the moment they walk into the trailer on site of a new development to the moment they actually pick up like their first service tray. They, they do a phenomenal job. So while I can't speak to the automation platforms, I have to, I have to give them kudos from the end-to-end -end candidate experience. It's top-notch. Good. And I think all three of them touched on one common denominator here. And if you have a restaurant out there, go get on your phone, try to apply to a job on your phone, put a stopwatch on, see how long it takes, see how cumbersome it is. And if it's a nightmare, then 
pick up the phone, call your HR department, and let's say, hey, we got to kind of evaluate this process because our candidates have people chomping at the bit to get them to come work for them. And if you're not really you know, looking at yourself and what your candidates are going through, then you're, 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 you're playing from behind. So keep that in mind. Yeah, if I could just add one thing. Yeah. Um, I read an article the other day recently that Chick-fil-A was doing on-the-spot hiring for any candidate that came in in a red shirt. So you walk in off the street in a red shirt, we'll interview you, and you can start today. And so that's our competition. And so I think that's really kind of to that level of innovation that, that we need to be at. And so really, like you said, starting from the interview process, the onboarding experience, um, just keep that in, in, in mind. Good points, yeah. absolutely. So uh, if somebody's wearing a pancake shirt, Jonathan, <laughs> and you think they'll come, you'll hire them? <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's see what else I got here. I got all kinds of questions. We're going to have some questions for the audience as well. Uh, I want to make sure I kind of load my friends up with some softballs first. Uh, so let's see. Uh, let's see. Let me see here. Sorry, folks. We're kind of covering all over. Let's, yeah, he's hadn't brought this up. Uh, how has COVID Say right, COVID impacted change the way you guys are, are paying employees. Have you guys kind of seen how that's kind of you know done some things different in your your brands? I mean, what are y'all doing there on the on the pay or share with them what you're paying, bonuses, that kind of stuff. Let's talk about mm -hmm. pay, and then again, your piece will kind of segue into here too, Brian. Yeah, so definitely we have given out a lot of just appreciation bonuses and just kind of going that extra mile. Um, last year, as everyone is familiar, the restaurant industry was hit pretty tough. Um, for QSRs, um, we were one of the brands, thankfully, that was able to recover pretty quickly um, because we had the drive through opening, we had curbside, and so we were able to um, be very innovative um, that helped us throughout the process, but um, really appreciating the team members um, so giving them an extra mile bonus um, throughout the year. It wasn't just a one-time thing, but just showing how much the brand appreciated them um, for coming in when there were times that maybe they didn't feel comfortable, they didn't feel safe, um, you know, just due to their own immune systems, their own environments, their family life at home. Um, but really, again, just showing the appreciation, not only through pay, um, but even just um, we've given so many kind of personal testimony stories um, of just whether it's employee of the month, but at a brand level. Um, so kind of company-wide, you, you go to whataburger.com and we're just highlighting um, just different stories of team members who've gone that extra mile um, throughout the COVID process, um, just to show appreciation in that, in that manner good. as well. Mm -hmm. Sabrina, what about you guys? How have you all adjusted your compensation, retention bonus, sign-on bonus? I think like everybody, we increased a little bit mm -hmm. um, our minimum wage, mm -hmm. you know, so that we are more competitive for everyone else. And we also looked at our current employees and pulled the report and made sure that everybody that's currently working for us, and that's really important part of retention, is making the right amount, is making where everybody should be at. So not only the candidates coming in, but making sure that your current employees are taken care of. Mm -hmm. and Brian, I know this is something that you've kind of seen your yep. customers and your solution can really kind of help dial this in. Can you tell us a little bit more? Yeah, dur during COVID, it was interesting because we had bank branch closures. We had less tellers in branches. The lines were longer. So what we found is that a lot of restaurants moved to putting tips on payroll. It was just easier. We just couldn't go to the bank. We didn't want our customers handling, our employees handling cash in front of customers uh, for that sense of we run a cleaner operation. While that was fine during COVID as a net result today, um, employees need to be paid out their tips daily and if you're not if you're putting it on payroll and you're not actually paying them out daily they're going to go to a restaurant across the street or a bar across the street to gain those earnings and it's becoming more and more apparent u.s bank closed 400 branches there's less staff banks are even having a difficult time time staffing just like restaurants are and so that means more time for a manager essentially running to the bank off the floor less time than dealing with customers managing the customer experience and recruiting and developing employees. So that's really kind of what we've seen. So we've seen the pivot from cash to payroll back to cash again. Okay, good. Let's see here. How are we doing on time? Good? Okay. All right, let's see what do we got here. Let's, we kind of talked about the recruiting piece and we've talked about some of the you know, retention piece, but let's just dive deeper into retention because again, keeping you know, your employees happy and you know, providing tools and resources for them to continue to educate and grow with your brand. But just, you know, what is kind of the, you know, 
what you're seeing currently or you guys have on the horizons about retention? Because again, that's, you know, the, the, I don't know if you guys know this, the cost per hire to hire a, you know, an hourly team member is roughly about 2300 to $2,500 if you really do the math. And then to hire a manager, you know, it could range anywhere from eight to $10,000. So retention is very key uh, in, you know, we all know that. So share with me a little bit more about the retention piece uh, that you guys have kind of expand on a little what you shared earlier. Yeah, so especially during COVID, we were seeing a lot of employee burnout in the restaurants. You know, we're understaffed, managers are tired, they're, they're pulling doubles. Um, and so that was a, a big focus kind of coming out of COVID that we really needed to look at. Um, so we've, um, you know, in addition to wages, um, really highlighted our, our training and development process as well. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, the partnerships with the colleges, um, but as well internally at Whataburger, creating a, a restaurant career development path for all of our employees to kind of go through and get additional training to where even if they don't make Whataburger the, their career forever, they're still gaining um, good life skills, um, whether it's you know practicing being able to speech, leading teams. Um, so really trying in the training and development piece about, hey, I know it's a lot in the restaurant, but we care about your learning, we care about the training piece. Um, so not only having that kind of hand in hand in the restaurants so that they have future growth, um, but they can kind of see the success stories. The Whataburger is a very tenured brand. A lot of our senior leadership have been with the company 20, 30 years. Um, so really highlighting those stories as well to see kind of, hey, they started at the team member level and see how we've been able to, to grow their careers. Um, so really kind of focus on that. And are you conveying that through ongoing training or through your career site, the hiring process and yes. peer reviews, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, just through the online career site, but even in the restaurants as well, um, kind of our, our general managers or our operating partners, um, you know, they're not on, on the makeup table or on the grill. Um, they're, they're instead looking back and pulling those team members and kind of saying, hey, this is what I need you to focus on um, and being able to give that one-on-one -on -one development time. Good. How about you, Serena? Retention's got to be important for a yes, six we, unit. <clears throat> uh, part of our culture is our four uh, core values that are pride, hospitality, growth, and family spirit. So we definitely focus on the growth piece, on leadership development, and also on the family spirit part, which we've incorporated cultural islands, which are um, little, you know, sharing experiences. We go outside of the restaurant. It might be, you know, just a cup of coffee. It might be like on Tuesday, we have a big baseball game that we're taking all the junior leaders to, um, and just sharing that experience and being promoting the passion for the brand that you can only promote in a way that, you know, they're friends with each other. They genuinely enjoy being with in one another's company. So. Good. Well, you kind of intrigued me yeah. with something about mm -hmm. looking at walk-ons retention. And so, I mean, you might have a comment about this, but I'm still intrigued with how you can look at data. And then data is key these days. And if you can see the data that you're losing folks and you can use your tool to kind of help you know, retain them, maybe I'm teeing you up with a softball here with tell me more. Yeah, and I can't go into specifics on like the data yeah, yeah. per client. Yeah. Obviously, I'd get in a lot of trouble. Um, but I will comment because I have to agree with what Whataburger and Andy is doing with respect to the career pathing. Yeah. That's amazing because at the end of the day with the turnover that's happening in the business and you see it, you have to show them a pathway to something bigger. And not just doing that, but we have a, I'll give you an example. We have a, 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 a mid-sized independent in New England. They do a fantastic job. The career path, just like what Whataburger is doing, but they're pushing it out through social media as well. So they're highlighting the personal journey and the stories of the people moving from position A to position B. Mm -hmm. And who doesn't like a personal story? People love reading personal stories. And that personal story is tied to the brand. So I love what they're doing there and then tying it back to that success story, highlighting that individual, I think creates a lot of buzz and a lot of respect for a brand as well. Good. Well, I told them before we kind of went to Q and A, you know, what would be you know, one or two things that these folks in the audience could walk away with as you know some action items that they could go back and talk with their team. So you guys gotten some ideas from the panel. Hopefully, you guys have been taking notes. But again, is there any kind of core things? from you know, what you shared today that you want to re-emphasize, and then we'll jump to some questions. So I'll start with you, Brian, again, just kind of, we'll go down the line, just you know, what do you think you can, these folks can walk away with, that they can share with their team that you know, might be able to help them with some of these two things of recruiting and retention? Um, I think once you get the candidate in the door, I keep 
keep, I, I really love what you're doing. So I, I, once you get the kid out of the door, you gotta just, you have to show them how they can get the, you know, there's A, B, C, D, and E, right? All the mm -hmm. different steps. But don't make the, the further steps seem so difficult to achieve. Show them the, the, the first step up and highlight those wins on, on sure. you know, with the team internally and make them feel like a family. We look at a lot of like, uh, you know, with whether it be like walk-ons, Beefo, Brady's, and, and some other concepts that we work with it, that have very high retention, they're highlighting it inside of the restaurant to the entire team. They're pushing it out through social, and those candidates that are looking at those brands are like, well, wait a minute, I too, like what is Amazon doing for me? I can just keep driving this truck, or what is Uber doing for me? But no, if I go work for this brand, I can, I, I see this, my friend is doing this, I'm seeing this, this journey unravel or, or be pathed out for this person so I can see myself starting at $15 an hour but then making $100,000 mm -hmm. in X amount of time. So I think just leveraging social, leveraging career path, setting achievable goals, I think is, is huge. And you know, we do, like, we work with brands that are not as successful as other brands and we look at the playbooks of those successful brands and that's what we're seeing is just really the celebrating sure. um, of the journey as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Andy, do you want to kind of touch on any final things yeah. to point out? I would definitely say um, highlight your culture. Um, make it a personal experience. So it's not just an interview or not just an onboarding um, process. But when they come in, you know, have them walk through your restaurant, walk through, you know, get to know your company. And this is tell them your personal story. So that way you, they're kind of bought in as well. Um, keep in mind, they're interviewing probably at other places as well. And they're trying to see who can, you know, how can I get started quicker? Who's going to pay me the best? What are the best benefits? Um, so really trying to capture that as quickly as possible, but showcase what your brand, what your company has to offer, um, and really make it very personal. So here at Whataburger, you know, their first day when they come in for that interview, hey, what do you want on your Whataburger? Let me go build it for you. And then here as we're, you know, after our interview, like we can share a meal as well. So we're really trying to think outside the box um, to just make it very unique experience. Um, so that way that they walk away, um, it's very memorable. Good. Sabrina, I mean, culture is a common denominator here, right? Yep. So what, what is your takeaway for the audience possibly? I mean, besides everything they said, just recruit for retention. That's, that's the biggest piece because if not, you're just stuck in an endless cycle of trying to pull people in and, you know, losing them. Mm -hmm. So just think about that person when you first meet them and think about your brand and do they represent your brand and then, you know, be there and support them and create a path and all of that. Good. All right, well, we got how many minutes left? A couple. Okay, so do we have any questions from the audience? Okay, we have a gentleman over there. She'll bring you the mic, and then you can... All right, so um, two questions, one on recruiting, one on retention. So with recruiting, ever since COVID, it's been kind of a a stereotype, you know, that people are not wanting to come back to the hospitality industry. You know, we don't pay the best. You get treated mm -hmm. kind of crappy by customers and you get pretty much, you know, low pay for poor treatment most of your shift, even if management is great. How are y'all combating people wanting to change industries or people being hesitant to come back to hospitality? Mm -hmm. I think we really need to work on breaking that stereotype. Um, like you said, it, it does have kind of that negative stereotype of, you know, long hours and being on your feet all the time and having to work with negative customers uh, and really focus on highlighting uh, what your brand has to offer. So whether it's the, the experience, um, the, the hours, um, the fun environment. Um, so really trying to showcase and focus on the positives of, of that brand and why they want to come work for you. Um, just so we try to break that stereotype. Awesome. And then question on retention. So you have employees that have survived, you know, with the, through the pandemic with you that have worked long hours, that have picked up slack because of payroll, um, and they want raises, like this yeah. one, um, <laughs> and the rest of my team, but they want raises, you know, they want benefits, and, you know, we're still losing money, but slowly, you know, getting back up to where we were. Mm -hmm. So how do you show appreciation without, as an owner, sinking yourself further in the hole mm -hmm. by doing it prematurely, but, you know, not counter, you know, counteracting yourself and saying, hey, I appreciate you, here's nothing I can do. Because I don't, you know, how do you handle that? Well, salary is not obviously the only option for um, just highlighting that employee. We, like I said, we focus on our values and just taking that employee out, caring about their life, maybe 
you know, giving them something that will be special for their own personal life. Maybe it will be a weekend off. They've been talking about flexibility on schedule. Like there, there's a lot of ways. And I think the biggest one that we have is creating that fun environment, creating a place where they belong, where they have relationships, close relationships with their coworkers and just, you know, respect among everyone and a culture that you want to be a part of. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> what about it? Um, I've worked with Daniel since before he opened the restaurant, so it's been a roller coaster just to try mm -hmm. to keep people, let alone to find anyone. So he's done his best, but how do you avoid burnout? Because at this point, my kids are so burnt out, they don't want to come to work. What do you do to fix it? Because that's the biggest problem I think a lot of small business owners, especially in small business with restaurants, you know this, yeah. burnout is ridiculous because you've only got 10 people to begin with. Yeah. What do you do when you have seven days a week, you have to be open and 10 people to run the entire place, mm -hmm. including all of us. Because yeah. I promise for the 60 and 70 hours a week our employees are putting in, we're 90 and 100 hours. Even if we're not at the restaurant, we're at home, we're on the phone trying to figure out how to make this work for everybody so that the doors stay open but your paychecks get paid. Yeah. I wish it was an easy answer. Yeah. Um, that would be the million dollar question, but I understand, you know, I, I know, understand exactly what you're saying. Um, I think for us, we've had a lot of even area managers and director of operations who are going in the restaurants daily, um, working alongside next to them. So letting them know, I understand we're short staff. I understand we have a, a retention problem. We're working on it, but I, thank you so much for being in here. I really appreciate you and I value the hard work that you're putting in and letting them know that it's not going um, unnoticed. Um, I think that really speaks a lot to our, our leadership, uh, ensuring that we're not just you know slave drivers and okay, pick up your pay paycheck and have a nice day, um, but really trying to build those personal connections so that way they don't feel like I'm in it alone. Mm -hmm. And I think the culture piece also plays into it because there's, there's a difference between working you know 60 hours a week in a place you don't enjoy and working 60 hours a week in a place that you're you know, safe at and then you like and that you have friends there. Yeah. Um, this is for Sabrina. Could you tell us again the name of the software that you use for training? Whitetail. Will you spell it? W-I-S-E-T-A-I-L. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm curious if y'all have any um, uh, well, let's say you've got people who interview really well, you know, but and in the interview, it seems like they're a great fit for your culture and they have all the right answers to the questions and the smile on their face and everything, but then they show up and they're not what you expected. Um, do you have any tips on, you know, red flags to look for during the interview process that they are just sort of, you know, nodding along and whatever, yeah. or and they're not really walking... You know, yeah. talk on the talk, but not walking the walk, um, and and or how to deal with it once you realize you've hired someone like that. <laughs> yeah, as I mentioned earlier, we really had to look at our interview guides and kind of revamp our interview process. Um, just the demographics of the managers at Waterburger. Not everyone maybe even knows how to do an interview. Maybe they didn't go through that process in high school. So we really had to revamp that process and train um, those managers on, hey, what are the red flags to look for, and really. Hiring with these qualities in mind, um, she mentioned earlier, um, incorporating your core values of the brand and asking questions, you know, and be very direct. You know, don't beat around the bush and oh well, what does your availability look like? And if you were in this situation, what? But being very specific and intentional in your questions, um, that's something that really helped. I think a lot of our managers that maybe weren't hiring the best candidates because they didn't really know what to look for, um, but we kind of had to put together a toolkit and a guide. Um, to really kind of step one, step two, step three, just to make it a lot easier for those managers in the restaurants. And for managers and above, we do a tactical interview. So you get to see them like an hour working the shift so that you, you read those behaviors. You see if they're holding the door for people or if they're picking up something from the floor. Or, mm -hmm. You know, you get to read those pauses that you can't really do in a sit down interview. 
However, there are some times that you've gone all through that and you thought it was a great interview and you end up with um, a team member that maybe isn't the best candidate. Um, so really kind of working through your training programs, um, offering support so it's not just, well, they're a terrible employee, you know, we're giving up on them, um, but we do want to give them some other opportunities to, okay, maybe do we need to give them a training buddy, maybe have the manager work directly one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so trying kind of all different avenues because we do want to retain as many employees as we can. Uh, but ultimately, if it's not the best fit, you know, kind of working through that process with them collectively and letting them know, giving them feedback as well. Mine's a recruiting question. I'm curious to know, what is the most important interview question? Ooh, what is the most important, What's the most important interview question? Wow. Um, I think from a retention piece, I always like asking the question about what are your goals? What are your personal goals? Um, because I think that's going to say a lot about why they're here in that interview. If they can tell you, oh, I'm just looking for something temporarily, you know, I'm getting ready to move, I'm looking to change career fields, um, I can already kind of pinpoint retention, like, okay, you're probably going to only be with me for a few months. Um, and we, we want people that are going to stay with us so we can train and develop. Um, so I think what are your, your goals, whether personal career goals, um, because how can you, working for me um, with our brand, how can I help you achieve those goals? So again, you may not work for me for 10 years, but while you're here, um, what are some different tools and resources that I can help you in that process so that you're successful um, and I can support you as well? I'll, I'll hop on. I'll, so we're not a restaurant, obviously, but I do have a viewpoint on this. I would say pre-COVID, employees in this space were treated, it's more transactional, and now it needs to be more of a relationship. It's less of what can this employee do for me and more what can we do for this employee. So I think the best interview question that can be asked is what can we do to help you develop better professionally at your time here, whether you're here for one week or you're here for one year, what can we do for you? And they're like, whoa, what, what? What can you, what? And they're surprised. And then they think, well, wait a minute. You're here. They're, the expectation is I'm not going to be here for like one year, two year, three year. They're saying, whether it's a week, whether it's a year, how can we make the best time? Uh, how can we make your time here the best professionally? I think for me, when I'm, I'm going to go down to the nitty gritty, like when I'm interviewing an hourly position, one of the questions that I listen to the most and I hear the pauses and everything is describe, if they have experience in the field, obviously, um, describe a memorable upset customer that you've had in the past and how you dealt with that. And that little things that they say give you a lot about their attitude as a person and the value of hospitality and just noticing what they consider you know, going above and beyond is and what they consider okay, or just reading into those pauses that they do. And sometimes they take a while to answer that question, just thinking about like, what am I going to say? She's asking me something weird. But yeah, that, that's the one question that I value the most for hourly positions. Thank you. So, uh, Brian, particularly for your solution, uh, and thank you all for all your contribution. We appreciate it. Uh, in, in our circumstance, we're interested in that speed of compensation uh, aspect. Uh, so, when we, we, we run into some hurdles, when we uh, look at the aspect of putting our servers' tips on payroll, they freak out over, oh, I used to walk out of here with cash every day. Now I'm going to get my money in two weeks. Uh, and then when we look at instant pay, uh, they say, well, now I have to carry around another debit card with me or I have to go to an ATM to get my money. So they're so used to having that, that cash and they walk out at the end of the day. And then on, the, on our controller accounting side, you know, they're saying, wow, we're paying these people every day and we don't get the money from the credit card company for two, three, four days sometimes. So uh, what does your solution do or how do you address those kind of uh, uh, questions uh, when you're working with a client? Um, great question. Uh, first off, nobody wants another card in their wallet. We're not, so we don't disperse on cards. 
So we disperse, we're the only company in the United States with connections to all 10,000 banks and credit unions and all prepaid cards. So we can pay anybody, anywhere, anytime. So there's no cards. Um, we're the only company that can deposit funds in real time in under a second, 24 seven, 365. So the benefit to the employee is we're saving them a trip to the ATM. They wanna to go to their own ATM and take the money out they can. Here's what we found, they're spending less money. Less money and less cash in their pocket. I know if I have $40 in my pocket, it's gonna be gone tomorrow, right? But if it's in my bank account, I'm less likely to spend it. So you're still providing them the benefit of getting paid daily, except you're saving them a trip to make the deposit, they're saving more money, they're not adding another card. Now you make a bring up a good point about your merchant credit card processing batch doesn't settle until the next day, right? Well, we, when we draw funds, it doesn't debit from your account the day after that. So your batch will settle before we'll actually debit your account for tips paid out. So you'll always be um, solvent in order to actually pay out the actual tips. So we've addressed all of those issues and it puts us in a uni unique position to solve for it, unlike you know, those decades old like card solutions with fees that are written, like none of that. Did that answer your question? Yeah, that's perfect. Thank okay. you. And we've, yeah, we've, you know, we've talked with you and we've talked with other providers and uh, yeah, that sounds great. Thank you. Cool.